What we're going to be going over here is a change from the equity method to the fair value method for an ownership interest in another company. And this is the case here where say Corporation A has purchased an ownership interest in Corporation B. And they would have been using the equity method here if they had a holdings or a holding interest of 20 to 50 percent of Corporation B's here. And this is the case where we're going to be looking where they do have an ownership interest where it's greater than 20 percent holding here. And they're going to change to the fair value method here because what's happened here they're holding interest in corporation or corporation A's holding interest in corporation B has gone down here for whatever reason it's gone down and now their holding interest is less than 20 percent so now this is where they're going to have to convert from the equity method that they've been used for accounting for their holdings in corporation B and they're going to have to change over to the fair value method because their holding interest has decreased it was at 20 per, over 20 percent here and now it's less than 20%. So they have to make this accounting change here to the fair value method. Now, first off here, any earnings or losses previously recognized under the equity method remain as part of the carrying amount here. And we're going to be looking at the case here where when you have an ownership interest in another company here, in this case is Corporation A, they're going to a share in the income and losses here of Corporation B. And we're just going to throw out some numbers here. And they're also going to get some dividends received here from Corporation B. That is, Corporation A is going to receive some dividends from Corporation B. Now, those are the things that we have to deal with here. And we'll, we're going to go through how we account for those and we're going to determine how we determine our excesses, excesses here between our dividends and and our share of our income or loss here. But before we get into that, let's go down and this is the heart of the matter that we have to do uh, deal with here. Um, using this equity method here, we're gonna have this investment stock account here, and that would be the investment that Corporation A has in Corporation B, and again, that's for their 20 to 50% holding. Uh, that they would have here or ownership of Corporation B. And what we have to do here is we have to ultimately, uh, we're going to be changing to the fair value method here at the end of the third year here. And that's when our ownership interest changed here. Corporation A's ownership went from less than 20 to 50 percent. It went down or below 20 percent. So they have to change over to fair value method. And what the key is here, you have to determine the carrying value at the date of the change here. So when you're dealing with the equity method here, you have, again, your investment stock account here, and you got uh, it set up here, whatever you invested in, whatever the initial investment was here, I'm showing 9,000. This is in thousands of dollars, so this could represent my $9 million. So to determine our carrying value here, each of those, we're going to be looking at three years here. So uh, our investment account here, our investment in the stock account, is going to increase for the share of the income. Invest, income investment that or the share of the income that Corporation B has each year here. That's their share of the income, their investment here. That's going to increase your investment or your stock account here on your balance sheet here. And then the thing that reduces it is it, it's in the equity method, any dividends received reduces this investment account here that you're, you're holding account here that you have in Corporation B. So any dividends received reduces the investment account. Any share of income here increases the investment account. And then based on our, our increases here from our share of income, less our dividends received here, any re uh, that would be a reduction to our income account. We're going to get the net amount here at the end of the period here for any increases or decreases in our investment in our in this stock account here. Okay, but before we go into that, let's go look at our numbers up here. So this is what we're going to be looking at, those three years here, and we're going to make the change here at the end of the third year here from the equity method here to the uh, fair value method because the ownership interest is now decreased less than 20%, so we have to change over to the fair value method. So what we have to do here, we have to take our share of income here and we have to compare it against the dividends received here. Now this is a share of income or loss here. Corporation A is uh, as a result of their ownership here in Corporation B. So what we have to do, let's just go through them here. For year X1, uh, they had 600 here. That could be like 600,000, but that was, they had a $600,000 worth of share of income that they received from Corporation B. And then the dividends received, well, they received 400,000 for the year. Let's just go in hundreds here. Let's just talk about it. So 600, 
compared, less the dividends received here of 400 is going to give you the excess of the income over dividends here of 200. Uh, so what do we want to do is we have to keep track here of accumulated of excess amount here. And we'll do that here because you'll see how it comes into play here when we have to convert over to the fair value method making our journal entries. So year X2, a share of income here was 350. Uh, dividends received, 400. So again, the excess here is 50 here. So 50. But now we have to go and we looking at our cumulative excess here for year X2. Well, we had a net cumulative excess here in year X1 of 200. And now we have to reduce it by the excess here that we have for the year here, or negative 50 here, because our dividends here were greater than the share of income for the year here. So 200 less the 50 gives us 150 or 150,000 here in our cumulative excess. And then looking at the last year, year, year X3, well, they didn't have any income, corp they didn't share in any income here of Corporation B, but they did receive $210,000 worth of dividends. So the difference here, that excess for the year is 210,000. But now you have to, the cumulative excess, well, we were sitting at 150 or 150,000 here in year X2. Now uh, it's, the excess here is a negative 210, so a cumulative excess we're sitting with here. Uh, that would be share of income over, or, over the dividends here now is negative 60 or 60,000. So 150 here less the 210 uh, negative excess here gives us 60,000. Now we could also look at it in our terms here, just totaling up our columns here, our share of income over those three years here, year X1 through three X years, 950 or 950,000. And then the dividends received here over those three years here would have been 1,010 or 1 million 10, thousand here and difference here comparing your income here of 950,000 you received more dividends here of 1010 here so you're getting a negative excess here you got uh, more dividends here received than the income here so that's a negative 60 simply the difference here and that's what we call a liquidating dividend and this we have to take into account here when we're recording the, the at the fair value method here so that's essentially how we're going to determine our carrying value at the end of the period. So going down to our T account here, our investment and in stock account here, this is again using the equity method here. Let's just say again, our, we had a debit amount here of uh, 9,000 here. Let's, we'll do it, it would be 9 million. Let's just say it's 9,000 here for easy understanding here. And then it would have been increased for that share of the income we received here, uh, corporation A received from corporation B, that invest, increased their investment account here by those amounts. So the net amount here of that share of income was that 950,000, that's what we had up here. And then uh, our investment account here, using the equity method here, would be, again be reduced by the dividend received here. So those are the dividends received. Total amount here was 1,010. That's what we had up here. So netting out our share of income versus our dividends received here. You can see the dividends received uh, outweighs it here. So we got a negative or credit here of uh, 60,000 or 60, 60 in here. And that's gonna reduce our carrying value here that we had our investment of 9,000 by the 60 amount. So we're gonna go down here. This is again our liquidating dividend here reducing our carrying amount. We had the 9,000 up here, less the net amount we have here year end, at the end of year X3 is 60,000 here, gives us a carrying amount here of 8,940 here, 8,940,000. But what we had to do, and I'm just showing it here in our investment account in this T account, you, all you have to do, the key here is you just have to determine whatever share of income you had for the for each of those years before the conversion here that we're looking at here. And that increases our investment in our stock account here for the ownership, in this case, Corporation B, that Corporation as A has in Corporation B. And then the dividends, any dividends received from Corporation B here by Corporation A reduces the investment account. And then you net out your income, share of your income versus your share of dividends. 
and in this case we have a liquidating dividend here and that's going to be used to determine our carrying value at the date of change so we went all through all these here to determine our carrying value here at the date of change okay so we've done we've gone through here and we looked at the equity method here and we had this liquidating dividend which re reduced our investment stock account okay so now let's go over and let's look at how we'd record this here okay we'll be going through these same numbers here. I'll just use this chart up here and what we're going to really be focusing on is this third year here this year x3 and how we make our entries here in year x3 when we come to recording our uh, our, our carrying value here that we determine we determine we had a reduction here in carrying value under the under the equity method and we had to determine what that carrying value was and then we we're going to make our change here so let's go over here and the second thing we have to do is we have to change from the equity method here to the fair value method when we're recording and this is what we're going to be doing here for recording our fair value method here. So for a fair value method, we're going to have this cash account here. And that's where we're going to be recording our dividends received here uh, for the period. So that's a, for the fair value method, we just take our dividends received here that we have for the period for those three years that we're making our conversion here. And then we, what for the fair value method, because our holding is now less than a 20% interest in the corporation b here it changed we have what we call available for sale securities because the holding is below 20 percent before we had an investment stock account now it's switched over to available for sale and this available for sale that's going to we're going to be representing our actually carrying value here at the end of year x3 based on the what we had here for the equity method and then the other uh, thing we have is the, the dividend revenue here on our income statement so that if for the fair value method we're going to be looking at that dividend revenue here for each of those three years here okay so let's go back to our cash account we can go right straight up to our dividends received here and those are what we're going to put into our cash account to 400,000 here for the first year, 400,000 for the second year, and 210,000 here for the third year here. So just debit or increase our dividends, our, our cash account for the dividends received here for each of those three years here. Now, the balancing amount here is gonna go over to the dividend revenue here. So, okay, a dividends received becomes dividend revenue. So easy enough here for the first two years here. Year X1, we had 400,000. Year X2, 400,000. But now, year X3 here, it's not, we can go up here. We had 210,000 here for the dividends received here for year X3. That's what we were looking at here when before we made our conversion here. But now we're gonna, it's gonna become 150,000. And really, that is going to be, that's gonna be affected here by the fact that we reduced our investment account here. So what we're going to do here, let's just look at this 150,000 here. That's actually going to be, if we, we went through that uh, procedure here, determine an accumulative excess for each of those uh, three years here, whatever our accumulative excess here of uh, uh, income over dividends received here, we accumulated that based on whatever excess we had at the for the year here and whatever excess we we're carrying for the beginning of the period here so we made those calculations so now this uh, dividends received here at two hundred ten thousand is reduced by the cumulative excess here at sixty thousand so the difference is going to give us our balancing amount here and a credit of 150,000. So what we have to look at here is again available for sale. Remember we had to determine the net carrying value and we can go down and look at that again here but the carrying value was reduced here by six the nine thousand or a nine million dollars worth of now it's switched over to available for sales securities here is reduced by that 60,000 here of our a total amount here at the end of the three years here for the share of the income or the dividend received here was greater than the share of the income over those three years so we had that liquidating dividend that reduces our available for sale security here a new balancing amount we came up reduced our investment here of nine thousand by sixty uh, uh, sixty here gives us eighty nine hundred and forty so now really 
if we look at this available for sale here, our carrying value here that we have, we, our dividend revenue here is going to really be a plug here. You can look at it in two ways here. You have to determine your carrying value. In this case, we had a credit here, uh, reduction in our carrying value here of 60 or 60,000 that reduced our available for sale, now called available for sale securities. And that balances, and then that credit here reduces our debit amount here and our cash received here of the uh, excess dividend or the dividends received here at 210,000. So the credit or our balancing amount goes into dividend revenue of 150,000. So you can look at it either that way. Either look at your balance between your credits and your debits here of what you're recognizing here for dividend revenue here in your cash account versus your balancing or your reduction here in this case for the uh, uh, the carrying value of the of the investment here. So it, the credit here reduces your debit here. That gives you your balancing amount here of 150,000 your dividend revenue. Or you can, again, just go up to it and you just look at your excess account through your arithmetic here. So the, uh, your dividend revenue becomes actually the previous years here, cumulative excess that we had of 150,000. So nonetheless here, you can, that's what you have to be concerned with. Really what we're getting down to when we're dealing with this fair value method on the conversion, we have to know what our carrying value here was at the end of the period and we had to convert it over from an investment in stock to available for sale securities and then we had to balance out the uh, dividends received here against the uh, that invest are available for sale uh, securities here the reduction that we had here in our securities against the dividend revenue here in that last year here, year X3. So, okay, you can look at it and you can see how that's done. Now, let's just go down here one more time here. So under the equity method, just to go over it here, this investment stock account, that was the 20 to 50% holding. You see, we started out with the 9,000 here and then our share of income here uh, was reduced by the dividends received, debits or increased our investment stock here for the share of income that Corp A got from Corp B, but it was reduced here by the dividends received. And for our period here, we had a net amount here, of more dividends received over the in, uh, in share of income received here. So we have a net reduction in our investment in our holdings here by 60 or 60,000 called a liquidating dividend that reduced our carrying value here from 9,000 or 9 million by 60 or 60,000 down to 8 million 940,000 and that's what we had to record up here in our available for sale security. So we available for sale securities is really the carrying value here at the end of the period. We had to calculate that carrying value at the end of the period here and then we had to make our other conversions. We Cash received was essentially the same here under the equity method here versus the fair value method. That was for the dividends received here. And then the dividend revenue was the same for the previous those years here, except when we got up to that year of change here. When we made that change from the uh, equity method to the fair value method, we had to make the adjustment to our dividend revenue here. And that was really that cumulative amount here, that cumulative excess between the income versus the dividends received here from Corporation B. Okay, so that'll take care of our discussion here, just so you understand what's going on when you make the change from the equity method here to the fair value method. You have to reclassify your securities here uh, under the fair value as available for sale securities and they were an investment account before. Now they just become available for sale because of the change here. And then you had to make your adjustments to the carrying value here when that change was enacted here when ownership in uh, Corporation A's ownership in Corporation B become uh, less than 20% they had to make the conversion and then at the same time they had to convert the dividend revenues here at the end of the uh, th third year here when they made the change because of the excess or the accumulative excess that was going on that ultimately ended up in a liquidating dividend here uh, for the reduction here in the invest in the in securities investment that Corporation B or A had in Corporation B. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.